glory to God. <laughs> I've got quite an amazing front row over here on the, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Katina. Nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> Listen up. Listening. Okay. I want you to stand up. Oh, God. Turn around and tell everybody who's your grandparents. My grandma is Carolyn Landon Bobby Berry. This lady right here. She has three last names. Now you may sit down. <laughs> Don't give her too much attention now, okay? That's pretty fast. If that was a quarter mile, that'd be 11 second run. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, good to see you. Pastor Kelly was great last week. He uh, offered another, another opportunity today. So you get to hear from me. And hopefully it's a standpoint for Jesus, a flow from him, because he's the only one that counts. Praise God. You know what I mean when I say that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we're continuing on Wednesday nights. It's a good time. We're going to be about uh, Esau and Jacob this week. Talk about that story, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. I invite you to be here, be a part of that. It's really good. I think everybody that's here is, is really picking up quite a few things from the presentation that this is done. So we do 30 minute a DVD from a professor at Hillsdale College and then we talk about it and uh, discuss it and make sure that we all have it. Good afternoon folks, glad to see you here this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can pretty much set your clock on them, you know. Seriously. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Uh, I want to make a mention of something that we'll really have full information for you next week on. But you need to put this in your calendar for October 14th and 15th. Uh, the Smithies, Corey and Rochelle Smithy, who pastor North Elevation Church in Mansfield, Texas, will be a, here with us for that weekend. So they're coming in, and on Monday morning, they won't be here. On uh, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we're going to have everybody in. We're going to have a breakfast, okay? So that's a good reason to bring yourself and your spouse and your significant other and we don't accept dogs yet, but we're working on that. But uh, <laughs> Cammy's working on that for sure. But uh, we're going to do that, have a, have a kind of a quick but decent breakfast. It's going to be more than a roll. So um, we're going to do that. And then we're going to break down in between a men's group and a women's group. And this is just going to be an opportunity for us to start kicking off some men and women's groups that we're going to be doing next year. So what we want to do is to give you more of the vision of it, more of the understanding of it, let you be a part of it. And we'll do a teaching and a time of reflection with each group separately. And then uh, we're going to come back. We're going to do the Pinot deal, Brad, Dion. Okay. Brad, Brad says, yeah, you know, amen. We're going to have a, a luncheon after the meeting with pinto beans, cornbread, onions, and all that kind of good stuff. Ham, it's all going to be in a good old southern meal. So uh, you're going to get fed twice, plus you're going to get the most important one spiritually. And if you haven't had pinto beans and uh, with onions and ham, and it's not ham hocks, it's ham lo loin ham that we've got to be able to put in there. And it'll be so outstanding and cornbread. 
Some of it's going to have jalapeno pepper in the cornbread. Some of it won't, for those of you that are more mild Christians. But it's going to be a great weekend. And then uh, Pastor Corey will be speaking Sunday morning. And I want to say this about the Smithies. They're probably the most faithful, steadfast people that I know in my life, outside of my wife. And she took it to Jesus, so now they, they're the only ones I can think about. But I've known them since back in the 80s. Known them um, 40 years, I guess, right at it. And they've got a great marriage. They've got great kids. Their children are all serving in ministry. They've gone through the struggles like we all have with kids. They ain't perfect, you know. But they're all serving Jesus, uh, involved in ministry, great grandkids. I've seen them through the thick and thin of it. I've seen them through the times that financially were just really tough and how they've walked through it with peace and joy and it's just such a great couple a great friend of ours they're one of our board uh, Corey's our, one of our board members so uh, you need to know him and know them Rochelle is just super awesome if you don't like Rochelle we'll lead you to know Jesus okay because she's just an awesome woman steadfast in the Lord Anybody in their church ever has anything, they want prayer, they run right to her because they know that she out there believing with them all the way. They came, when my wife was diagnosed with cancer some years ago, they drove from Texas to her to lay hands on her and drove back same day. How many people do you know would do that? That is a representation of who they are as people, as Christians, as pastors. So um, I, it just, it's, it's such a wonderful opportunity. The people that we have come in here are specially picked in place. You know, I had a couple of guys that wanted to speak in the last three years, and I said, I've only got one guy that I haven't known 20 years at speaking. One, that's Doc. I haven't known him 20 years. And... Those of you that don't know who Doc is, Doc Ely is one of our board members, and he's been here before, he and his wife, Char, and uh, he and I are, he's my personal coach, too. So we're, we're blessed with great relationships, and we have oversight to help us, to guide us. And I tell you what, if you get half an inch off the main line, Doc will knock you back on it real good. And uh, that's what I want. That's what I want for you. Um, and I can't say I want it for you unless I say I want it for myself first. Okay? But the Smithies will be a special, uh, they're not some hoop holler, they're just real solid. Um, uh, he, he has a master's in theology, but he's very spirit filled and spirit led. So just want you to take advantage of that. Will you do that? All right. This is going to be the last message in this series. Uh, it's healing for today. However, it will not be our last message on healing. Uh, the reason that we've titled all these messages in the series the way that we have is healing for today is to try to gather some folks uh, that may not know about it and may not uh, believe in it or whatever. Uh, there's three types of thinkers or non-thinkers on the subject. Uh, those who don't believe healing is a promise from Jahweh, from Yireh Rapha for today. Yireh Rapha is the compound name of Jehovah and Rapha. I'm the Lord that heals you. Exodus 15:26. For those of you that are taking notes. Second type is those who believe that healing's for today, but they need a fuller understanding of this important blessing that God affords to the believer, as well as the one searching for deeper understanding. Uh, do you know that God also heals people who aren't saved? Yes, it's his calling card. Okay. Third one is those who need a freshening up, and we all need a freshening up. Oh, there's a fourth category, but they don't much believe anything about anything, so we won't talk about them. However, anyone who has heard these previous message in the series knows that we are giving you proof that is the will of God to heal you today. Amen. That's the will of God. 
Does it always happen? No. It's the will of God. Everybody becomes saved and comes to the knowledge of the truth. It doesn't happen every day. But there's a time to walk through. My personal experience with receiving the manifestation of healing is not the same as yours. But it's real and it's based scripturally. Not just pulling something out of the air. Oh, Jesus healed those people back then. Well, it's okay. That, that's, I need more than that. You need more than that. You need people. So many Christians are going progressive Christianity these days because they don't know a blank thing about Christianity. I'm just being honest. And then there's other Christians that want to put God in this little box. And you cannot do that. That is wrong. That is sinful to say God is limited today. God can't do this anymore. The only thing God can't do is lie. Amen. He tells the truth. And it's for the past, the present, and the future. And the truth is he wants all people to become saved and come to the knowledge of the truth according to 2 Timothy. And that word saved there, don't be using this back to me in a few minutes. That word saved there is the same Greek word where he said in the Gospels when Jesus was healing people that they should be made whole. Healing is included in wholeness. Those people many times, the Bible says, and they were made whole. They were made whole. They were made whole. I used a story when we talked about this weeks ago about the, uh, the lepers, uh, the Israelite lepers. They were there and they couldn't get close to Jesus because they had to stand off from the crowd because of the law. It said they can't mix with con the people because of contagiousness of the disease of leprosy that eats your fingertips, that eats your nose and your ears and your toes. And Jesus said, looked at them and says, go show yourself to the priest, which was a law commandment that they were the only ones that could pronounce cleanness. And as they went, they were healed. Amen. If they stood right there, they would have gotten nothing. As they went, they were healed. And one, only one, one came back and worshiped Jesus in appreciation. And what did Jesus said? Your faith has made you whole. You're whole. He was made whole. In other words, it all grew back. He was 100% whole. The rest of them just got cleansed. This guy got his parts back. Now, that's the truth of, of leprosy. That's the truth of the word of God. And that's the truth that we can receive today that we can be made whole. That includes salvation, deliverance, being whole mentally, being made New, a new creation is what God intended us to be, not a redo, reover. He's not a plastic surgeon. It's a good place to say amen. He's not a plastic surgeon. He does it right. He does it at least as good as new, if not better. <laughs> That's God. That's our Father. That's our Savior. That's our Lord. He wants to do good things. Test time. Okay, Brad's going to go around and be with you on the mic. I want you to tell me, raise your hand on this, tell me a healing verse, a healing verse of Scripture. Everybody at the same time, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to make it easy for you. You, you, got, you jumped ahead to my next. Oh, we got one right over here first. Good morning. Uh, one of my favorites is 1 Peter 2.24. And what does it say? Ooh, a lot of words. Okay. A lot of good words. Okay, but it's great. It talks about healing. He was pierced for my transgression. No, go. excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, starts off with... Um, it's a, it's a quote of Isaiah 53, mm -hmm. and it's, golly. Yeah, that just happened. Give me the first three words. I want to say it right. 
he committed no, oh, 24. He himself bore our sins. He what? He himself bore yeah. our sins. He himself bore our sins on the cross that we be. <clears throat> he himself bore our sins on the cross. Help me. So that we. So that we might become. Well, you might be quoting a different one. So that we might Say die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Okay, the last part of it, by his stripes we were what? Healed. Okay. Live to him, die to ourselves. Yes. Go ahead, stand up. Heal me, O Lord, for I will, shall, will, or shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I will be saved, for you are my praise. Jeremiah something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Doris. Okay, these two have passed. Who forgive it all our iniquities and heal it all our diseases, sometime in three and three. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's a goodie. Anybody else? Carol. Well, I looked up the reference just to be kind. Um, Psalms, oh, do I need to see? I'm sorry. Psalm 107, 20 in the Amplified Classic. He sends forth his word and heals them and rescues them from the pit of destruction. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody else want to pass today? I don't know where it's found, but it's God that heal, healeth thee. I'm the Lord that he, yeah, yeah, that healeth thee. Absolutely. Very good. First, how about... Isaiah 53. Anybody know what that one is? Five and six, I believe it is. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, the chastisement of his peace. My peace was upon him, and by his stripes, I was healed. Oh, it says I am healed, because the Old Testament had to look forward to the cross. Second Peter 2.24, we quoted, it says I was healed. You were healed. Looking back to the cross. Remember where the word and the spirit come together at the cross? Okay. Go. I need the microphone. Is, is this going to be a tongue twister? <clears throat> I don't know, but reading out loud scares me, so. <clears throat> you can do it, baby. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Mark 5, 34, 5, verse 5. Oh. Chapter 5, verse 34. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, now, see, there's no way she's been a Christian as many years as y'all have, because she's not that old. So some of you older folks, well, I just, it's okay. I'm not putting, there's no condemnation. You saw what I did, okay? I blew the first one, right? How about Matthew 8, 17? It's also a quote of Isaiah 53. Maybe it's Church of Christ day to day. <laughs> Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. Okay. Do you know, let me, let me give you something here. I'm going to throw this one. This is no charge. There is one of the leaders of progressive Christianity who emphatically states that Isaiah 53 is not talking about Jesus. If you are that blind... You don't need to be preaching. You need to be seeking God. And that's the kind of thing that you can hear at certain places, including YouTube, by the way. And YouTube's got a lot of good stuff. But when you get out in those rooms, not talking about Jesus. If that's not talking about Jesus, then why did Matthew quote the same verse about him? And why did Peter quote the same verse about him? Those are two comebacks immediately. Yeah. Okay. Because they both, this was, this, this was said about him. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Matthew 8. So I'm just saying, you know, check out the word of God according to what you hear people say. Including me. Now I, I endeavor to be accurate on everything I say. 
Sometimes my tongue turns upside down and I mess up. <laughs> but seriously, I, I think it's emphatic that a man or woman of God know the scriptures they're talking about and understands them and digs them out and researches and not just receives something anybody says. The guy that said these things is, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's young, and he's totally deceived. He also happens to be homosexual and he had to find a reason to kind of okay that. And I, I'm, there again, I'm being serious about it. He, he, he's an outright homosexual, says he is, and it's okay to be that. Well, if, if you're homosexual, let's talk about it, okay? We love you, care about you. Your behavior is not lining up with the Word of God, so let's talk about it, okay? Not put anybody down, tell them the truth. It's loving them to tell them the truth. One of the largest churches in America has gone totally progressive, and it's not in Oklahoma, <laughs> Well, there is one in Oakland that's pretty big. It's done it. But anyway, a guy who's been speaking for years and has lots of campuses, and his father was a well-known national Baptist preacher, and he's saying things now that are just totally off track. We need to pray for these people. We need to believe God, that their eyes are open to the truth, that they return to the joy of their salvation and not what their academic friends tell them or what, they're, what they can do to get a lot more people in their church. We want more people here, but we want to do it with the gospel, Amen. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, Dan, get back on the subject. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. You want to add one, Brad? <laughs> Put him on the spot. <laughs> He's, you, you, you've already said all the ones I know. <laughs> uh, I had, what you, when you said that, I initially thought of um, Ephesians 3, the end of Ephesians 3, which isn't necessarily talking about healing. Like it would, you wouldn't put that as the title mm -hmm. of these verses, but mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 3, 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know his love that surpasses knowledge. <clears throat> that you may be filled, filled with the measure of the fullness of God that's healing. Yes, yes. Now to him who is able to immeasurably more than, uh, to do more than all we can ask or imagine according to the power at work within us. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. That was really good. <laughs> Peter preached in Acts chapter 10. Verse 34, starting out. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts those from every nation who fear him and do what is right. What's right? Receiving Jesus and growing in that. God wants that all people become saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 36, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel. God sent the message to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. Now, yeah, it didn't say Jesus in that, but he, he professed that and confessed that all through the Old Testament into the, um, the preface of the New Testament, basically the Gospels, the first few lines of that. And the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Verse 37, you know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Has the Holy Spirit passed away? No. Okay. <laughs> but we're all in trouble if he has. 
and power and how he went around doing good and healing. Oh, just some people, right? All people who were under the power of the devil. The devil's the one that's caused disease and weakness and iniquities. Because God was with him. So who did the, the, the power to do the healing? According to what Peter's saying, Jesus was the, it was the conveyor of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Okay? We covered much in the past seven studies, which began about uh, October, excuse me, February 4th. I think we probably have done just about one of these a month. So this is number eight, and then, like I said, the last of it. We also shared that we would lean on a book called Healing in the Atonement, which was written over 100 years ago by Dr. T.J. McCroson, which uh, was re-edited and charted, shortened by Drs. Roy Hicks and Kenneth Hagin Sr. Dr. McCroson was a Greek and a Hebrew scholar. Just so you'll know, I'm not preaching from the book, okay? Instead, I've used the book basically, especially for this message today, uh, because I got a revelation from the Lord on the Word of God back in the 80s on it. There's another thing that's important to share to this message today, which is going to be a little shorter because I'm just now getting started. It's, it's winding up its healing for today, and it's beginning a new short series that we're going to do parts one and two the next couple of weeks, then the Smithies, then part three the week after that. And that series is going to be called The Life of God. It's the life of God that we can embrace. Okay? Now, before we jump into Romans 8, what chapter precedes Romans 8? What chapter precedes Romans 8? I'll give you a hint. What chapter precedes Romans 8? Okay, you sure? You can take that back now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure you're with me. <laughs> there are two different points of view on the transition between Romans 7 and Romans 8. Um, the first point of view is that chapter 7, Paul was lost. Chapter 8, he's born again. Okay, the other viewpoint, which is the one I favor and believe, is that Romans 7 demonstrates a spirit-soul battle. When we're born again, God makes us a new creation that didn't exist before, a new spirit being that, that is brand new on the inside of us. But we also have, in part of our inside being, our soul, the same soul that it was when you did all the things you ought not been doing. Okay, so there's a battle because when you're born again, all of a sudden, you know, God will help you stop a lot of the things you were doing, but you're going to find out some new things you've been doing that you thought were okay. One of the first things that the Lord dealt with me on was little white lies. I was doing, I was helping people. I'm making it better for them. It's a lie. Little bitty, great big. It's a lie. I didn't really see that until I was born again. And so that was just one of a couple thousand things probably. So I like to say that Romans 7 is um, born again as a Christian, and, but having struggles. Why? Because he hadn't got his mind renewed. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we must renew our mind that we may be transformed. Well, transformed is a very significant work. And some people call this the sanctification process. I call it the soul salvation process, where from glory to glory, from faith to faith, you're, you receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Spirit's already saved at that time. And there's a lot of teaching on spirit, soul, and body. I love that particular deal. I could take you the rest of the day on that. But... That's what it's about. Paul shows the battle of his own life. He comes in chapter 8 and he says, what's the answer to his issue? And he says, it's Jesus Christ. Okay. And to know him is what we need to do. Know him better 
to continually search and seek for him. So, Paul, like all of the rest of us, had to renew his mind to the word. And as we dig into the word of God and let God show us and change us step by step, it happens once you're born again, it should continue until the day that you go to meet the Lord. Okay? Now, that's the difference between fire insurance and the fullness of God. Because that's the transformation process in your soul. Okay? I don't have time to go into all of that, but I love it. If you have any questions about it, go to the website, search Spirit, Soul, Body. And then if you have any questions, see Brad or Kelly or me. Okay? Okay. I'll probably keep you a little longer than they will. <laughs> I love the subject. It's so important to Christians that they understand this. And why am I still making some sins? Why am I still not doing what I need to do? Why am I having this struggle about the things I want to do, I don't do, the things I don't do, I want to do, all those kind of things. Paul shared that. That's what he was going through. Yeah. Oh, it happens to Christians. It doesn't make you a non-Christian. Like when I got saved, I got saved about every three or four days after it for about two months. <laughs> Didn't know any better. I sin. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to discuss a small section of Romans 8 this morning. And then for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be sharing the whole book of Romans eventually. But we're going to jump right to Romans 8.8 because 8, we're talking about healing today. Yeah. Thank you for that one amen. <laughs> I didn't look who, see, who said it, but I know who it was. <laughs> Is she hear his voice, and I hear my sheep's voice. <laughs> Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, working out of your own self, you're not pleasing to God. Let me back that up. You're pleasing to God, but your behavior's not pleasing to God. God's not mad at you, okay? He died on the cross for you. But his behavior, it's like you still love your children when they make a mistake. You know, when your two-year-old fills her diapers at a restaurant, you still love that two-year-old. Right. <clears throat> we won't go into the rest of it. We got any parents here? Okay. okay. You know the ramifications. If you don't laugh a little bit, I'm going to tell you Pastor Ray's <clears throat> experience. However, verse 9, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Everybody is not a child of God. Only those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ can be counted as a child of God. You'll hear that quoted all the time, just any news channel from time to time. We're all a child of God. No, we're not. We're all created in the image of God. But we need to become children. We have to become adopted into the kingdom is what my Bible says. Verse 10. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Whose righteousness are you alive in? Jesus Christ's righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 he who knew no sin became sin so that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became sin. He didn't know it, didn't involved in it, but he became that on the cross at Calvary to pay the payment for all the junk that I had done and my rebellion towards the maker. Okay? So my body is still the same body just like my soul is. And the body will be redeemed at the resurrection when we're all resurrected, okay? But until then, our body has the effects of the world, the, the flesh, meaning the bad things we've done, abuse, and the devil, he loves to pick on you. Spiritual warfare says, no, you don't. Not today, Mr. Devil. 
the blood of Jesus is against you, and impose that, praise God. Verse 10, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit's alive, alive, alive because of righteousness. We say, well, my body's not dead, but just ask Adam and Eve about that. Because of the day they sinned, they died in the flesh. The flesh has only been held alive because that God has given us this time to let our bodies die so we can be brought into heaven. Am I, am I still with you? Yes. Okay, this is good stuff. Yes. But you have to think a little bit. Okay, I don't give you these little sermonettes to Christianettes. They smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I know I just picked on a couple of people, but anyway, that's okay. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible tells us. And the Bible tells us that when we're born again, the spirit of God comes to live in us. I'll read it again, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life. Amen. That's Zoe, the God kind of life. Not plant life, animal life, lower kinds of life. It's the God kind of life. It's when Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. He's talking about the Zoe life. Amen. Okay. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give Zoe life to your mortal bodies through, here comes the Holy Spirit again, his spirit who dwells in you. I'm going to come back to that word mortal in just a minute. So He's a life giver. If the spirit of Christ dwells in us, why? Because we're born again. Then the spirit of Christ is the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. And if he lives inside of us, something ought to be going on. Okay. He will also give Zoe to your mortal body. The word, well, let me say this. There's a couple of quotes I have here. It's kind of interesting. Pope Paul VI Somebody should tell us right at the start of our lives that we're dying. Then we might live life to the limit every minute of every day. I like this one by, of all people, Leonardo da Vinci. All the while I thought that I was learning how to live my life. I have been really learning how to die. It's pointed for man once to die, then the judgment. Make sure you die in Christ. Now, allow me to stress that what I'm talking about is not the redemption of the body. That does not happen until we go meet the Lord in the air or at the, at the time of the rapture, which is at the end of the tribulation. Or the time of his second coming when the graves are opened. Okay? I'm talking about an override of the consequences of the effects of the fall of man, Adam and Eve, in your body. Overriding it temporarily till you can get raised out of the grave. This also stresses the fact that we must be born again. You see, biblically I can say Jesus wants you healed just as much as he wants you born again Amen. because it's a package. Amen. Now, you can believe part of that package. You don't have to believe all of it. Somebody could write you a check for 100 grand and you can cash a check for 10 grand. But that doesn't mean it's over unless you quit writing checks. Our debit cards for all you people under 35. <laughs> okay. Without being born again, you have nothing to look forward to except the pit. 
By being born again, we receive certain promises in this life as they are in the Bible, BTW. Being born again gives us forgiveness of sins now. It gives us certain other promises like righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit now. It gives us mental and physical healing now. Okay? At the same time, you, your body, that is, will still con continue to fade away. Kind of like MacArthur said about uh, uh, old soldiers don't die, they just fade away. Well, that's true for all of us. You know, we just kind of fade away. Our body, this is going to be hard for you to believe, but I'm not as good looking as I used to be. Things happen, you know. You, you, you catch all kinds of things that things start falling, you know. Chest of drawers, you know, chest drops into your drawers. <laughs> Except for everybody but Sarge. Just go have him lay hands on you. I'm sure that'll work. This is what death doomed means. Death doom, excuse me, this is what mortal means, death doomed. Your mortal body, he gives life to your mortal body. Some people say, well, that's just going to happen in the resurrection. No, it's actually to your mortal body, which is your death doomed body, not your dead body, but your mortal body. Mort uh, mortality will put on immortality. Everybody's going to be mortal. Everybody lives forever. I saw a guy on the internet the other day. He's taking 111 pills a day. And I won't say what else he's doing, but he thinks he's going to be immortal. I got news. He's right. Because you don't die. Your soul will go to hell if you don't know Jesus, though. I'm not being mean, I'm being honest. Deal with that. The king of glory has stepped in to give us the opportunity to acknowledge our maker, the God of heaven and earth, and to receive his forgiveness because he shed his blood at Calvary as the payment for our sins which were against God that we could never pay. Good works will only get you cleaner. It's just like... You can take all the showers you want to be yet, but you're not going to get a new spirit until you give yourself to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what all the new creation is about. That's what all the reception of the God kind of life is about. Okay? So the God kind of life that we're going to be talking about more and more, this is an introduction, like I said. The God kind of life is a, it's beyond and above what we're able to think or ask. Oh, my goodness. Christians aren't living to the fullness of what God intended. I'm not talking about positive motivation. Get, get your best life now and get the best you can out of it. But your, your best life is still in the future. But you can make this one a whole lot better than it is. When the Bible says that you're given righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the way God sees it, not the way we see it. Amen. See, we've got to get our mind thinked around. We, repent means to change your thinking, to look differently, to reconsider. We've got to see like God sees. We, when we open up with the eyes of God, then we'll see what all he's done for us. And then we can thank him that much more, and we can share with others that much more. That's, that is, ah, wake up. And I'm talking to myself, too. You better know it. I get it first. It's here before it's there. But we can all. God has prepared a place for us. Yes. He's also pre prepared a life for us. And it's the flow of the Holy Spirit within us. And when you get supercharged with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you just get much more of that. 
And that's an important thing that a lot of people want to discount or don't want to talk about very much. It's like you keep it quiet. And, well, it's the second experience. It's not the first. But it's important that we get it. God wants you to have the whole thing. God wants you to have the whole hundred grand. Except his hundred grand doesn't have any decimal points. Every time something's needed, he just puts another zero in the middle of it. Whatever you need. He said, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. I'm not talking about driving a new Rolls Royce. I'm talking about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is no law. I'm talking about seeking the kingdom of God first. And then... Oh! The other things will be given to you. Now, you'll remember that one. If I do look like a monkey. That's what it's about. <laughs> the breath of God into your life. There, don't, don't think it's anything new. It's not. Study men and women of old. Many of them have tapped into it. But so few people are willing to continue to search. One of my favorite old time preachers is Thomas Aquinas. 13th century. You ought to read him sometime. It's amazing. The things he tapped into. Oh my gosh. Open your mind. Understand the thing. Think about what the Word says when you read it. If all you read is one verse a day, read it with everything you've got. Read it in the Holy Spirit. Unpack it and unpack it and unpack it. Research it. Dig deep. Jesus wept. Why? How long? Who for? What's the purpose of it? What did they put it in the Bible? <laughs> That's what happens. The God kind of life, we're going to jump into it, and we're going to unpack it, open it up, and we're going to get a lot of goody out of it, and we're going to be able to change our lives, the people's lives around us, just by being obedient to what God says and receiving it and believing it, walking by faith. Praise God. This thing is not that hard. I'm not talking about having to stow up in a monastery for the next 10 years of your life. I'm just talking about taking a good portion of your life and spending it where you need to be spending it. If you're driving down the road, turn the radio off and stop making it, start making it your prayer closet or turn the Christian music down a little bit and start praying. Well, I don't know how to pray as I should. Good. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Yes. What do you mean? Tongues. Yes. Part of it. Yes. Nothing to be ashamed of. Yes. Nothing to be afraid of. I had some people over there in the other part that, you know, they do that in that little church building that shakes and everything. Well, praise God for it. They're doing more than you are. Yes. Taking advantage of what is available for us. And not just being clean Christians, but being real Christians. That's what Jesus wants. Are you ready to die for him today to yourself? What if somebody walks in the back? Machine gun. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to stay alive. You can just leave this building. And you confess Jesus on your way out is not Lord. The rest of you get shot and killed. How many of us would still be here saying, okay, shoot me. <laughs> Make my day. I'm being serious. I'm not joking. Yeah. How many people would die on their cross confessing Jesus as Lord? Do you know how many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people have already done it? What are you willing to do? Oh, well, I'm going to, I, 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 I renege, I, I worship that golden idol. Ah, uh, yeah, I worship the golden idol. Lord, you know I'm not doing it in my heart. You know, it's what's in your heart counts. Worship that golden idol. All these people, I'll be safe. I'll be able to be there and, you know, help my kids and everything. Yeah, I'll be safe. Get up and, Lord, would you forgive me for what I did? I, I just was doing that for this. I, I wasn't doing it in my heart, Lord. Or would we say, Jesus, thank you so much for accepting me. 
Into your gates, praise God. For the joy set before him, he went to the cross. For the joy set before us, we can go to the cross daily in this body and put it down and all the things that it wants to do. Thinker change. And opens up. The doors are put wide open. Heaven has things to be able to place in our lives because it's God's good pleasure to give us good things. And as he gives us more of his life, we can turn around and receive and give him more of his honor and praise and glory to him and to his son because they deserve more than we can ever give. And the life of God takes the worries out of me. Uh, think about this. Oh, it might be, might be this. I might go broke, and I'm, I might, you know, I might die of this that next year. And I... Can you come to the point of saying, "So what? It's for me and my house will serve the Lord." Yeah, I'm not talking about something that's easy. You know, Christians have to be pretty stinking strong because there's a lot of waves out there. They go this way and that way and a lot of things and, you know, how you can do this and how you can do that and, you know. Oh, by the way, before you leave, be sure and give me $100 a bill a bill piece and that way you'll get 1000 next month or whatever it is. Junk. Sink oil. <laughs> For those of you younger that haven't watched Westerns when you were 12 years old, that's what they used to do in the Old West. <laughs> yeah. What's the Old West? Yeah, what's the Old West? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I know this sounds a little serious, and it is. But I've got the joy of the Lord over this. Amen. The joy of the Lord is what his desire for you is today yes. and every day of your life. That you're not affected to and fro, tossed on the storms of life with every wind of doctrine and everything of man and all about this and all about that. And, you know, I want this and I want that from you. And it's okay to just do this one time or that time. Or, yeah, I know that person is an LGBTQIA plus person, but uh, I'm not going to, you know, cause any waves here. I'm just going to talk to them and be sweet to them. Maybe there's a time for a wave to be caused. Maybe that wave could be your mouth telling them how much you love them as a person and how much God has for them as a person. And to get them, to help them think. See, to, see, to think about what they should do and where they are. In the right spirit in the attitude of love, and we do not accept their behavior, but we accept them as a person. And that's a clear distinction. And that takes guts. If you don't have courage, pray. God gives courage to those in the Bible asking for courage. Okay? It's essential. I got a little off today with different things, but it's so much, it's so, I didn't get off on the subject of the truth. God has a lot coming up for us Amen. as individuals, a lot. And it's important that we take advantage of what Jesus did at the cross. If I go out and work real hard, and I take Chris for example, I like to pick on him anyway. He goes out and drives those machineries, machineries, those big machines that are bigger than elephants, works hard. If he goes out there and does that and makes X number of dollars and one of you walked up to him and said, could I have a dollar? I hadn't had anything to eat. You think he's going to give you a dollar? He's going to give you five or ten. Because he's going to feel that for you and know that that's the fact and that's what you need. And that's what Christianity is like. Because God is that. He is able 
exceedingly abundant beyond anything I can think or believe. I can think of a lot of big stuff. And I'm not talking just about a grab it. I'm talking about the things that are essential to life. Every time we send a check, or actually a wire to the people in India, Pakistan, Kenya, we're opening mouths to feed, and their mouths are just right in front of their ears. Because what comes next is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray with me. Pray with me, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for conviction of the things we need to be convicted of, for the empowerment of the things we need to be empowered with, and for the comfort of the things we need to be comforted with. Thank you, Lord, that we understand the single most important thing for anybody in this life is to be born again, to be made new by your Spirit, to become a new creation so that the old may be gone, the new shall come. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us very plainly that if we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, if we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, if we confess Jesus as Lord, then we shall be saved. If you're here today in this church, if you're on YouTube or our internet webpage, and you do not know that you are born again, that if something happened to you, you wake up in heaven, when you leave this earth or hell, you don't know. If you can't be certain that you're not heaven bound, then what you need to do is put your complete, whole trust in Jesus Christ and accept forgiveness of sins because he's already taken care of that issue. He's already paid the price. He's the only one that ever could. And thank you that you declare today Jesus, be Lord of my life. If you're in this building today, I want you just to raise your hand right you're, wherever you're sitting that I want to make Jesus the boss of my life today, the Lord of my life. Raise it high. If you're watching on video, right where you are, don't put it off till tomorrow. Receive what God has for you today. I'm going to ask everybody in here and everybody on video, no matter where you are, no matter when it is, to go through a prayer of confession with me. And if you believe this in your heart, then you shall be saved too. Say, dear God in heaven, I'm sorry for my sins. I've done things my way rather than your way. Please forgive me for my sins. Dear Lord, I know that you died on the cross as a payment for my sins. And I receive that. I believe that God raised you from the dead, Jesus. And I confess you as the Lord, the boss of my life. And according to your word, I'm a Christian. I'm a new creation. I've been born again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We have birthdays today. And I lost the list. If you have a birthday, stand up, please. Carol's got it. You're supposed to do that. Go ahead and do it. You're, you're better than me. Here, shout it from the housetops. Thank you. Certainly.
whoo, not that I need a mic. <laughs> Sorry, thanks, Brad. I was like, uh, can, hey. Okay, so birthdays. Stand back up. Yes. Oh, yeah. And me. So let's sing happy birthday to us, right? Yeah, sure. Happy birthday, happy birthday to, to us. us. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to us. us. Happy birthday, dear us. Happy birthday to us. Thanks. <laughs> Happy birthday. I think Sarge's birthday is 9-23-23. Yeah. And yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did just now. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> Okay, so I need to ask some, uh, Pastor Dan, so just, you know, think of something else. Okay, okay, so offering is uh, one of the things. And so 2 Corinthians 9, 8 to 11 in the Amplified and in case anyone wants to know why I'm a huge fan of the Amplified, is because it amplifies. <laughs> so, it's the female translation. It talks a lot. Yes, but it explains. So, um, it says, and God is able to make all, again, grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient. Hold on. Possessing enough to require no aid or support. Think about that. He will make us have no need for aid or support. And he furnishes in abundance every good work. He would furnish to us abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So, as you give, trust, trust, trust. Whatever's in your hand to give. Give as the Holy Spirit directs and trust him with the outcome. Um, announcements. Um, this Wednesday, they're talking about Jacob and Esau. Wow. Um, did I drop that? Thank you. Um, so be sure to come out and hear what the Spirit has to say to you through the teachers of Jacob and Esau and their relationships. Um, let's see. Remember, the Smithies are coming next weekend. And what was it, Kaylee? Breakfast, lunch? I'm sorry, the 14th and 15th of October. Thank you. Not this next weekend. Breakfast, lunch, and God, Kaylee said. Yes, October 14th, 15th. There's a sign-up sheet on the back. There's a pen and everything. Uh, for you to sign up, but we also have the techno version of sign up on our website. Yes, did anyone hear that? Okay, and uh, Pastor Corey will be speaking on the 15th, and Corey and Rochelle both will be speaking on the 14th. So be sure and put that on your calendar and plan to come out. Um, is that everything, Brad? Did I get okay? Um, so um, I had thought when I stood up that if it was in the red, and somehow it didn't go in the red. So even though we might be over time, it's not in the red. Um, this whole session has been healer, God, our healer. And there's not one person in this room that does not need to experience God's healing touch in some way. Whether it's your mind, your will, your emotions, your body, some way. And if it's not you personally, you have someone on your heart 
that you are trusting and believing God to heal either their mind, their will, their emotion, or their body. So I want everyone to get to your feet. Maurice, I'm putting you on the spot. I love you, man. We are going to do Jehovah Rapha and worship the Lord our God, our healer. And after that, we'll be dismissed. Okay?